Welcome to the Divine Warrior Ninjutsu Experimental Podcast number two for August 12th, 2017. And I am your host for this podcast, Jason Steves. That's Shihan Jason Steves in the Divine Warrior Ninjutsu, located in New Brunswick, Canada. There's a few things we're going to go over this month on the podcast. Notably, I think we're going to experiment a little bit with the time. We're going to push it a little bit further and maybe aim for around 30 minutes or so. I've been getting mostly good feedback, so we'll go from there. Again, this is experimental, so we're just trying a few ideas. We'll eventually probably even bring in a second person so we can start bouncing ideas back and forth off of each other. Make it more entertaining, a little bit more live, realistic, uh, you know, things like that. So uh, one of the things I wanted to address right away was benefits to training. Uh, a lot of people have discussed sometimes about what the different benefits are, other than the obvious. You know, like, what are the obvious things? Let's get some of those out of the way. Self-defense, obviously. Defense of yourself and, uh, and, and, and your family, like um, personal, personal property, different things like that. I should note also that uh, this is largely unedited. It is kind of going to be live... It's live for me, maybe not as you hear this, but it's live for me in the sense that I'm not really going back to make any changes. So if I fumble my words or make mistakes, whatever, it's probably going to stay there. Because that's just how I roll. All right. So some people have said, what are the benefits of training? It's come up in a few different um, conversation. So I thought we'd start with that. It's like, that's a good way to start. So what are some benefits of training? Maybe there's some of these that you haven't even thought of. Others are obvious. All right. So how about training in martial arts, training in general, if you go to a gym, training in martial arts and specifically training in Nijutsu, our style, Bujinkan or otherwise, um, it adds dynamic ability. That's an obvious one. What is it? What, what is Dynamic ability. What does that mean? So dynamic ability really refers to the ability to transfer some of the skill to other everyday life that is not related to martial arts, such as, I don't know, how about uh, if you're training the elasticity of your muscles through stretching, then you can carry that over to other areas of your life, maybe... If you are a construction worker and you are working on a house that is not quite finished and you're walking on a beam and you're going to jump across to another beam, your dynamic flexibility in ninjutsu training lends itself to your job in that case because you'll be able to get over there. Actually, that does bring up a, a memory of a student who once told me that he had only been training a little while and then he's, he got a job working in the oil fields out west, western Canada. And he told me that when he was there, this giant pipe was suspended in the air and it broke and swung. It had lost its uh, hold on the crane or whatever and swung down where he was standing. And there was he was standing in between of two other pipes, oil pipelines that were secured. And it would have come across where his head and shoulders was. And when he noticed it, he did a dive roll to the left over the pipe that was secured and the pipe that was swinging had missed him and he said dude you saved my life indirectly so there's an example of dynamic ability you're learning roles in training and it carries over to real life i've even heard stories of atsumi sensei walking with some of his students in japan and one day in particular he was walking several of his dogs and they wrapped themselves around his legs the leash and somewhat tripped him and they were walking on pavement, and he, without thinking, and very fluidly, did a front roll. And got up and kept on going as if nothing even happened. So that's a dynamic ability. You're not in your dojo. You're not in your uniform. And the skill that you learned there carries over. And that's really the point, isn't it? I mean, we don't learn things so that when we go back to the dojo, we can do those same things. We really learn those things so that when you get out there in real life, they apply themselves to your life. That is the whole point. It also adds awareness to your life. Awareness of your surroundings, awareness of your body, awareness of your abilities. And that carries over. So if you're in a crowded restaurant and a shady fellow comes in who's perhaps going to rob the joint, you become acutely aware that something is wrong with this character. 
that's only an example. You could be aware, maybe when you're driving in traffic, you're aware of the dangers around you. Again, going back to a job, depending on what your job is, especially if you're like maybe a security guard or a police officer or even a fireman, awareness plays a big part of that job. I think everybody would agree with that. So awareness, especially as far as it goes with the fifth Dan test, um, you're, you become acutely attuned to outside forces that would do you harm. Could be just be physical, it could be mental, it could be other areas. I don't want to. I don't want to speculate too much. But basically, the, the short answer is that it it does add awareness to your life. How about body balance? What is body balance? Well, uh, how about a good example of that might be if you're strong but not limber or what if you are limber but not fast or what if you're fast but not aware like we just talked about what if you are aware but you're soft skinned and not very attuned to taking hits or punches um, so body balance really refers to the ability of developing different areas of your body in harmony. So things like your stretching, your speed, your strength, your awareness, your not just dynamic muscles. So we're talking slow twitch fibers and fast twitch fibers. So slow twitch fibers gives you power and fast twitch fibers give you speed. So you have both that kind of thing. It is a complete self-defense system. Now we're we're talking specifically about ninjutsu. I know a guy who does Brazilian jiu-jitsu and he loves it and is not really that interested in coming to ninjutsu. Um because and but someone says what's the difference and I was standing there with him and he says, "Well, ninjutsu is a complete spectrum. It covers a lot of things while jiu-jitsu really focuses on one thing in particular." And that's true. That's one of the things I like about ninjutsu, though. Uh, it should be noted, though, that a lot of the times, if you're going into the dojo and all you're learning is combat with partners, that's not ninjutsu. That is taijutsu. There's a reason it's called taijutsu. The taijutsu is combat. It can include weapons, though generally it takes on another name. So if you pick up a sword, it's sword. It's a kenjutsu, or if you pick up a bow, it's bojutsu, that kind of thing. But there's a, a large element of taijutsu still involved there. So taijutsu refers to combat. Ninjutsu does not only cover the taijutsu. It covers things like survival in the woods. It could cover things like preparation for a catastrophe. It could cover things like explosives. Not to be a terrorist, of course. We do not condone violence uh, for personal gain or revenge or anything like that. Whenever we deal with something dangerous like explosives, it must be in the context of protecting yourself and family, maybe as a distraction from enemies. So, uh, the, it could also, as a complete self-defense system, it could include something like swimming. Or how about... Um, how about something horseback riding? Let's go. Let's think outside the box a little bit here. Let's go a little bit more because the ninja were drastic thinkers. Their lives depended on it back in the day, right? So how about something such as forgery? How about uh, lock picking? How about um, herbs for healing, or the opposite? Uh, signal. So it's speaking to enemies at long distance or not enemies but your your comrades at long distances and i don't mean with a cell phone i'm talking like special codes or signals with lights or smoke you know that kind of thing how about tracking how about uh there's so there's too many to list but the idea is that you cover every area so that you are ready to defend yourself and your family your community conditioning is a benefit to training it conditions most notably your muscles and your stretching and your toughness in order to take strikes. And that is 
the obvious one. There's also conditioning of the mind. There's conditioning of sleep. There's conditioning of just about everything you can think of. How about confidence? Certainly brings up confidence. We teach kids, and I think it's good for anti-bullying. It gives them confidence to know that they are not just a lowly body in the school. They are somebody. They are, they are important. They will amount to something important in their life. Um, not just to their parents. They're important to themselves. They should love themselves. Love, love uh, friends. Stand by friends. Even the stranger. But most importantly to themselves. Because then if they have confidence in themselves, they will grow up to strive. And they will grow up with dreams. And they will grow up to reach for the things that most people say don't reach for that. Other benefit is it decreases your response time so that you react quicker, so that you're more alert, so that you're more aware. Now we're starting to, it's starting to overlap into other areas. Now, another benefit to training is defense. We say that because not only self-defense, but defense because you may need to protect your family, or if you're in the military, you may need to protect your country, or if you're a police officer, you may need to protect the person that is being victimized by somebody, that kind of thing. So defense of others. Deep stretches is another benefit. That's pretty self-explanatory. It gives discipline. That's an important one. Most people they take that one for granted because you hear that, oh, uh, martial arts teaches self-discipline. But there's a lot more to that. It could be patience. It could be slow to anger. It could be if you have an ADD child who is very hyper and overactive, this will help them to mellow a bit and to become more in tune with himself. Energy. Benefits of training gives you energy makes you last longer in whatever you do. Exercises various muscle groups and joints in isolation. That certainly is true. Um, if you think of one thing, how about holding stances? I hope that your dojo, wherever you go, does exercises where they hold you in a certain position for five minutes, like Ichimaji no Kamae. And in this way, you realize how hard it is to hold that position, especially if you're in deep kamai, which you should be. Hatsumi has often said that beginners should be very deep kamai, even though as you get older, and by older I don't mean age, but rank, you don't need to go as deep. But sometimes beginners copy their teachers in that respect, and then they have narrow stances, and then they, they criticize those who go deep. But the truth of the matter is you should go very deep. And then as you get more advanced, you can narrow yourself and your legs and your stance until eventually, as Hatsumi Sensei says, after fourth dan, you no longer need to directly involve stances. It should be very natural, which I found that to be true, quite true. So, how about it extends your lifespan? Yes, I know there's anomalies out there, such as people who drink wine and they live to 120 and they, they credit wine with their life long lifespan. But uh, generally speaking, that is not the norm. I would say that the norm is if you're an active person, mind and body, then you live longer. It also provides functional fitness. That means it doesn't just give you useless physical fitness, like if we exercise and stretch our fingers by tight gripping and open hard and stretching them back and forth, rotating them and pulling on them, they say, what kind of what, what's the point of that? What good is that? But it, it does serve a purpose. It increases grip strength and it will stave off um, arthritis and it will give you better gripping when you are a senior. Reaching up into the cupboard trying to grab that can of beans and things like that. Another benefit of training is fun and new friendships. You'll meet new people. You camarade fellowship with them. I think this is very important. Not just as a friendship, but I think there should be a degree of loyalty and family there as well. And if you can't find loyalty and family in your dojo, then you should probably consider looking somewhere else. How about it heals pain? Especially in the neck and the shoulders, the back, 
the buttocks, the legs, the joints, the internal organs. That might sound funny, but yes, it does heal. It, causes, it promotes heal when you use something. You could just ask someone who goes to lift weights at the gym. It, it promotes an overall healing, and you compare someone who's been active all their life to someone who has been sedentary their whole life. They've obviously got a better grip on their body. Health restoration. It's based, almost the same thing, so if you're in a bad position, it puts you into a good position. Training it gives you heightened mental fitness and flexibility and improves your mind. This is certainly true, especially as far as alertness, awareness, reading, or learning. Learning in general. There's been lots of um, reports and studies done regarding things like um, advanced learning when you're older. Or if you've learned things all your life, or learning a new language, or reading books constantly, or trying to improve yourself in your job. These types of pushing mentally takes your mind into a better place and these studies show that it prevents Alzheimer's. It keeps your mind sharp. It, it staves off dementia. It keeps away depression. It keeps away bad mental emotional states. Mental health is affected greatly by heightened mental fitness and flexibility. It also heightens physical fitness, obviously. That goes hand-in-hand hand with a lot of the other things. It heightens your reflexes. It improves your body coordination. Especially, I noticed there's a lot of activities that we do with the kids that improves body coordination. Such as, if you're facing your children in your class, and you say, we have something in our particular dojo we would call Sensei Says. It's similar to Simon Says. I started it as Simon Says, but then the kids insisted on saying Sensei Says. And... As I'm facing them, I will hold my right arm out at a 90 degree angle and the other one in a funny position. And they, most of them, have to, uh, they imitate me. And many of them get it right, but some of them will not take into account the mirror where I'm facing them and they're facing me. And they will copy the exact side that I'm doing instead of taking into account that if I'm bending my right, they should be bending their right and not their left to mirror me. And that's a good exercise for kids, but it also obviously affects us as adults. It affects us in the sense that we can react quicker. We don't have to make direct contact. Uh, we can pick things up with our peripheral vision and react, things like that. Training is an income generator. It can produce income later on if you started teaching, or that's, that's, a, that's a, a very generalized one. Oh, everyone wants to be a teacher. Not necessarily, but that is... That's the go-to that most people think of. But I'm also thinking, uh, if you apply the skills to your jobs. So if you wanted to be a private investigator, it helps with that, obviously. And then it becomes an income generator that has nothing to do with teaching martial arts. Police officer. Um, you could be... Uh, actually, I, had, I remember compiling a list of things that someone could do other than teaching martial arts from skills derived from training in ninjutsu and it's interesting to see so maybe that's something that you guys could do yourself and just sit down with a piece of paper and pencil and write down some ideas of based on the skills what are some things that i could do with this and you'd be interested to see what comes up it's quite quite fascinating another benefit of training is increased presence that means that you walk into a room and the room draws their attention to you you if you work on stage or television or movies then you have an increased presence and you are you're there you the the invisible spotlight points to you or maybe the actual spotlight points to you as the case may be uh training also improves leadership you become a leader you don't necessarily try to be a leader but you do become a leader sometimes people do try there's an old saying that says um some are born great, some achieve greatness, others have greatness thrust upon them. And that is very true, especially in things like being a king or politics, as today's analogy of that. But it could be things like running a Boy Scout camp. It could be things like being, you know, teaching a class at your church or a small group. It could be leading a volunteer group. It could be just about anything, but it does improve leadership skills, for sure. How about it manages stress? and attaining mental tranquility and a workplace stress reliever. Absolutely, we definitely we go over things like meditation. 
We can even do the 10 second meditation or a five second meditation, which I teach. Uh, it's not the, not the standard. Obviously, it's more like 15 or so, but there is a quick ones and it helps with relieving stress in that type of situation. I heard before that, um, aircraft, air traffic controllers are the most stressful jobs in the world and you may need a very, tranquil mind or you must achieve a tranquil mind so that certainly helps it also gives you motivation training in ninjutsu promotes motivation i find that many people drop out and the reason is because they do not have motivation they are run-of-the-mill average people they don't have what it takes to reach far ahead um how about non-physical conflict management that means not fighting to solve a problem Ninja, of course, as in the days of old, would try to solve problems by going around them, not trying to take someone head on, right? That makes sense. So if possible, they would sneak around the direct problem and come at it from the rear or the sides or from above and try to come at it non-confrontationally, maybe through hypnosis, maybe through um, matching another person's body. Uh, their body movements and trying to unconsciously draw them down from aroused from an aroused state into a regular state if someone I'll give you a quick example of how that's done if someone's yelling at you and getting in your face then you start talking to them and yell and get in their face the same way that sounds bad at first because it seems like it would lead to a fight but what you're supposed to do and this is partly this is related to hypnosis and nlp which is neuro-linguistic programming basically you start like that so you match them and then within the next few minutes you start to lower your voice and you start to make hand motions less dramatic and unconsciously the other person will match you and their voice will drop and their hand signs will relax and then they are on the same level as you so that once you're nice and relaxed and you're only talking to them in a normal manner they are also talking to you in a normal friendly manner and then before you know it the stressful situation the anger and the adrenaline is gone how about a sports related stress buster that's similar to stress management but um how about if you play football uh so some of these skills can help you to achieve stress-free sports-related environments. Strategic planning, it's good for that. If you're in a position, maybe marketing, it helps with that because it helps you to think outside the box and to do things that you wouldn't normally do. Strengthening of the body, such as the neck, shoulders, back, buttocks, legs, joints, and internal organs. We mentioned that earlier, but that was more of a healing. Now we're talking strengthening. So once you get to normal, you will bypass the norm of what everybody else is and you'll become stronger, faster, better with those areas. How about survival? Training promotes survival. It promotes survival in the wilderness and it promotes survival in urban areas such as skyscrapers and pavement, not always in the jungle. Survival with your finances, survival with your health and survival with personal relationships and survival with your boss and your employees or employers and fellow co-workers how about team building team building i know that some people work well in groups and other people prefer individual work but if the time comes it does give you the ability to work in teams very rarely can you start ninjutsu and go from a white belt to a black belt with ever integrating with another human being. You must, at some point, pair up, at the very least, if not in a larger group. And if you have difficulties interacting with other people, this will help you to alleviate those problems. I know a person who has problems um, relating with people of the opposite sex, not because of homosexuality or anything like that, but because something happened in their past and they don't like to work with the opposite sex as training partners. But I think slowly I have been introducing them to the idea without them even realizing it, that they are comfortable in situations like that so that it's not an issue anymore. It helps to think outside the box. That's, that's for sure. 
I mean, um, Nichisu is outside the box to begin with, if anything. And um, that's not just, you know, like combat. That's like thinking, and that's like living. And how are you going to even think? I think you'll notice what's funny is that if you get to a position where you have to buy a new home, you're going to quickly realize how your Nichisu plays a big part in the details of your house purchase. You're going to be looking for things that you would never have looked for. And it's quite comical, but it is very true. And that's just one example. So, training also tones the body. So, um, actually, funny. That's funny because several people recently looking at some pictures of, like, say, Hatsumi Sensei and Nagato Sensei or uh, Ishizuka Sensei, not to leave anybody out. I'm not pointing them out uh, because they're the best or anything like that. They are the Japanese Shihan, but they've all said in pictures of in their advanced age and they all say why is their skin so smooth and so soft not soft soft but like soft as in there's no wrinkles and no defects and it's so smooth it's not wrinkly it's not hanging off of them like some old uh, seniors um, and that's because they're in continual use of their bodies they train every day it helps to preserve the collagen in their skin and helps to preserve the elasticity and to a degree it helps their youthful appearance and that's just the fact of the matter. Um, how about training as far improves the use of internal force? What does that mean? Um, internal force. A lot of people... Okay, how about a good example is a lot of people, if they throw a punch, they generate the power from their shoulder and their tricep to extend their arm and hit. But use of an internal force is not necessarily localized force, say, from the shoulder, but stepping, proper stance, off the ground, at the proper angles, so that you're solidly rooted against the ground, and the power is coming up out of the ground, off the ground, up through your bone structure, all the way up your legs and, and spine, into your shoulder, through your arms, and to the target. So this is more like internal force. It could also refer to something like, instead of, oh, here's, a, how about a battle strategy? Boryaku. So battle strategy, instead of saying, okay, there's a, a force of a thousand men ahead of us, let's try to get 1,500 men to take them on head on and fight. That is, I would say that's mostly external force. You're trying to overpower them. But internal force might be, there's a thousand men in front of us. How could we use 500 to not only not take them head on, but split the group so that some of them come to the front so they see us. And then we have a group on the left that flanks on one side and a group on the right that flanks on the other side. And another group that goes out way ahead of the battle and tries to stop them even from showing up using means that are available to them, such as, and I won't, I, I will leave it blank for you to fill in. That would be the use of internal force, using things other than external forces to external force, such as in brute muscular motion or movement to get the job done. Training also benefits you in the way of vitality. It keeps you happy it keeps you smiling it keeps you awake it keeps you alert it keeps you energized it keeps you motivated it keeps you excited oddly enough i'm about uh how old am i now i don't even know 41 i think i'm 41 but anyways i you know what's strange is I'm on Facebook, and I noticed a lot of people on Facebook last year said 2016 was the wor was a terrible year. It was my worst year. And then I'm starting to see it now in 2017. They're saying that it's a terrible year. And I'm like, you know, actually, 2016 was like my best year ever of my life. And I think the same thing for the year 2017. And now I'm thinking, 2017 is like, the best year of my life now, even more than last year. And I don't understand 
why or how necessarily, but that I've come to a place in my life, I think, where I can um, appreciate my mistakes and appreciate where I am and my goals and what I've achieved and moving forward. And my training has helped and the people I surround myself help. And I'm just in a better place. And nobody can ever tell me that 2017 or 2016 was a terrible year. It's a great year. And every year is going to be a better year because I say so. And it starts in my mind. And if I say it's going to be a good year, then it's going to be a good year. And we're at the 30-minute mark right about now. But I'll finish with one more thing. How about the benefits of training our work-related skill sets? We kind of covered this. But it could be anything from private investigation. It could be even something as strangely odd as gardening because now you have to grow your own food and there's some survival skills involved or what about relating with other people in the business you can negotiate deals better you can support customer service better you could help i don't know say you're a locksmith and you could better understand locks you can better recommend locks you know which locks are easier to pick you know which locks are impossible to pick or you give travel advice to people when they're traveling such as use these portable locks when you go so that you're not relying on hotel locks or things like that that's just an example but ninjutsu does have so many different skills involved it definitely carries over and improves work related skill sets and if you're not employed it can easily fuel your imagination to think okay I can see myself doing this now because I'm pretty sure that I have more training in this field than most people that go to university. And that could very well be true because you can go to university and still be stupid. So just because you go to university doesn't mean you're smart, doesn't mean you're skilled, right? So, so having said all that, I'm strangely confused as to how benefits to training has lasted this long in a conversation. I didn't realize how many skills and I'm sure I missed a lot you could probably think of many and if you can think of many you can send them to me and I would be happy to talk about them and add them in future podcasts that's only for this week though next next time we have another episode we will not be attacking this um, topic I have some other ideas coming up here such as the ranking system for for instance I think we meet we should talk about that and maybe get into the Kyan Hapo. And if you have a mission statement and vision statements and talk more about different things like that. We'll see. Nothing set in stone. We're very fluid and we'll go from there. So again, this is Divine War Nijutsu podcast episode number two, experimental podcast number two with Shihan Jason Steves. If you have any questions, you can email us at divinewarriornijutsu at gmail.com and we can go from there. We have a YouTube channel. Try to look us up on there. We have a Facebook group called Divine Warrior Nijutsu. Our website or the uh, YouTube channel is the same thing. We're on Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, Instagram. All of those links are at the bottom of our main website, which is Bujin6, the numerical 6. So it's bujin 6wixcom slash ninjutsu. And then you can find everything from there and go from there. So I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. And I hope you learned something because I actually learned something along the way. As we say, a teacher is also a student. Never stop learning. Never give up. And we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for joining me. Domo arigatou gozaimashita.